victims' families forgive Jug Jug, Chabalala. Their children may have been killed or paralyzed as a result of a drug fuel drag race, but two families of the six victims of rapper Malimo Jug Jug Marohani and his friend Themba Chabalala have forgiven their duo. This is believed to have played a crucial role in the pair being paroled on Thursday. On March 8, 2010, they crashed into a group of school pupils while driving under the influence of drugs and racing on a public road. The pair were initially each sentenced to 20 years in prison, but this was reduced to 10 years after their murder conviction ruling was overturned and they were convicted of culpable homicide in 2014. But a well-placed correctional services insider said two of the families of victims had accepted the decision to release the pair after meeting them at a hearing. Department spokesperson Singh Bakongsumalo said he was unable to comment on this and could only confirm that families of the victims had been contacted. Before parole is granted, we invite the families of victims to make an input. We ask them if they've reconciled or if they would like to reconcile with the proli, said Nxumalo. The source said two families were involved in the process and said they were fine with the two being released. They spoke to Marohani and Chabalala and through that, they say, some facts came to light that were not mentioned during the trial. The star understands that one of the families lost a child in the incident and the other had a loved one that was left paralyzed. It was also understood that one of the men had pledged to assist the family of the paralyzed child. In a statement, Xiumalo earlier said the pair were released on parole after correctional supervision and parole boards CSPBs, of Liu Wokup and Bavi Arnsport considering their application. The two were both classified as first-time offenders with a positive support system. They participated in relevant correctional programs and were further assessed by our special services experts, which among others include social workers and psychologists to determine their suitability for parole placement, the department said. Morohani's lawyer Rudy Cross said, I don't think I am at liberty to discuss what happened in the parole hearing. I can, however, confirm that in accordance to the parole hearing procedure, there is a victim-offender dialogue and can confirm that this happened in this instance.